Hello, it's time for some pips. Let's start with the easy puzzle. Start solving. Okay, what do we have here? We've got a five. Oh, we need five of something. Okay, well, that's definitely a double two here then. That's for sure. Uh, and then I guess we'll probably put the five two here. That seems likely. Actually, I think we have to because we couldn't put it down to the nine. We don't have a seven. So that's fine. Um, then we need um, two of something, which will be the zero. So this goes here, and then we finish it with a three, two. And that's that. That's the easy puzzle. All right, let's try the medium, shall we? Here's a Rodolfo puzzle. Uh, five of something again, which looks like it'll be threes. I think that's all we have five of. Yeah, I think so it'll be three. So we need a double three here. And then we need two of something, and that'll be a double as well. So it looks like that's sixes. So that's helpful. Okay. Uh, we need two more of something and then yet two more of something else. So those will be ones and sixes, I guess. Um, right, let's see. We have to finish putting our threes in, don't we? Um, one of the threes will go to this less than three. So that'll be a two or a one. I don't think it'll be the one because I think we do need both of our ones for one of the double regions. So I think it'll be three and two. Then another three goes into the void, which means another three goes into an equivalence region, which could be a one or a six. Wait, no, no, sorry, the five or a one. Okay, so it'll be a one, because we need a double one. And then the one and six um, starts our six equivalence region. We finish it there, and then five goes into the void, and that's the medium puzzle. All right, we can move on to the hard puzzle, another by Rodolfo. And here we have an equivalence region at the end. So that'll be double four or double two. Oh, and it, I see it all. It, the, the region looks like, the whole grid looks like six. Okay, so we've got a double that is bridged into a seven. The 10 could be six, four, or double five, I guess. Is there any reason it must be one or the other? I mean, oh, actually, I guess it's useful to see that it doesn't look like we can, yeah, we can't do the 10 in a single domino. So that explains the sort of orientation because we've got this ring down here, the kind of little loop of the six. In theory, the dominoes could be shifted, you know, one, either clockwise or counterclockwise. But the 10, because we can't put a single domino in the 10, that explains how we're comprising, you know, how we're disposing the dominoes down here. So they will overlap out of the 10, which means they overlap over the four and five regions and they overlap over the five and seven regions, which means the six points into the eight. So that's useful. So it can't be this zero. Could be the six, two, I guess. I mean, there's just gonna be a few options here. I might as well just check them out. This doesn't, I think, oh no, this doesn't work because, oh no, no, maybe it does. Maybe it does, sorry because the eight would then need another six, which is possible, which would have to be this three. And then there'd need to be yet another six here. Oh wait, no, sorry, it could be this five. I didn't see the five. Yeah, that is possible actually. Okay, never mind. Maybe that's not very helpful. Let's find something that the six can't be. So it can be the six two. It cannot be the six zero. Can it be the six three? We then need a five going into the nine, which couldn't be this zero. It could be the three, could not be the one. So it'd be five, three, or five, six. Those both in theory seem possible to me. I mean, this works. Yeah, okay. All right, I don't see how to rule out one or the other of those sixes. What do I, okay, we need two doubled something and one, right, one of them goes up here. So that's either double four or double two. We know that, that we know. The other double, um, I don't know. I mean, it could be six. It could be two if fours are up and up at top. So it could be two, six. It could be even zero, I guess. Boy, I don't know how to think about this. This four could be a, could it be a three, one? It could be in theory, if it were three, six, and then one, five, and then we had a zero coming off 
of the five, I guess. There's no reason in theory that doesn't work. That would actually mean our four would be here to finish the 10, which would mean up at top would have to be two. So that's actually fairly constraining if this is how it works. So I might as well play it out and see what happens. Um, so then we'd need a five, we need a zero connected to a five or six. So the seven would be a one or two, which could only be a two. So that would be there. Then we'd need the zero five to go in there. I mean, this is kind of interesting. It's sort of working. Then this six would have to go to a five. Then we'd need a three or five. This is working. This might be it. This is it. That was it. Okay. Uh, that wasn't a great solve on my part, I have to say. Um, I just saw something that seemed constraining and tried it because I like to try the more constrained ones first because my hope is to prove something wrong so I can just rule it out and get it out of the way. But sometimes it ends up being the one that is actually just correct. I don't love solving that way, but I find on pips, I, I've had to train myself to accept solving things that way because sometimes sometimes it actually is guesswork uh, and you don't really know in advance if it's going to end up being that or not. Anyway, it worked today. There we go. Those are the pips. Back tomorrow. Bye for now.